Hey, what's up guys? I'm Theo Joe, and recently you may have heard that Google announced a lot of cool stuff at their Google I.O. developer conference in California. So I thought it'd be fun to go over the best stuff that they talked about, at least the most notable, because there is some pretty interesting stuff coming up that they've been working on. So why don't we just jump right into it? So one of the first main things they were talking about is machine learning. That was a really heavy topic and artificial intelligence. And they demonstrated a couple new features that they're introducing that utilizes this technology. For example, one is smart replies with Gmail. So it kind of analyzes the content of the email and generates possible responses that you might want to say. So if it says, oh, how are you doing? Then maybe it'll suggest good or busy or something like that. And then you can just click on it instead of having to type out an email. They also talked about using machine learning to improve human input into machines. So they talked about, for example, visual and voice and how with like Google Assistant, they've been using it to recognize voice and increase the accuracy of detected words, but they're also going to be moving towards visual learning. And this could be anything from first recognizing an image that you took and telling you what it is. And they actually claim that their image accuracy for detecting what a thing is is more accurate than a human, which I'm kind of skeptical of. Maybe it has to take into account like obscure objects that not really anyone would know what it is, but a machine would. And then the other type of thing they were talking about is actually editing images. And they showed a really awesome example of a picture taken through a fence and how the Google algorithm will actually be able to look at that and say, okay, obviously this fence obstruction is in the way and it will actually remove the fence and kind of generate what is supposed to be in between it. Kind of like how our brains do already, but now the computer will be able to do it and actually create an image, which I think is awesome. Because, you know, you do kind of think of how, like if you're going to Photoshop something, you're like, well, I know what this thing is supposed to look like behind it, but there's a thing in the way and the computer obviously has no idea. But maybe now on the computer will be able to actually figure out what's supposed to be behind an obstruction and generate an image based on that. Pretty awesome. So in relation to all this, one thing they announced is Google Lens, which specifically has to do with detecting what you're pointing the camera at. And this is going to be integrated into Google Assistant as well as Google Photos. And their goal is to not only recognize what you're pointing it at, but also take an action possibly based on what you're pointing it at. For example, they showed you pointing the camera at a router where it says like the SSID and the password. And instead of having to write down the password and everything, you point the camera at it and it automatically connects to the router. It doesn't just write down the password for you, it just does everything for you. They also showed how if you're out shopping or something or walking down the street, you can use Google Lens and point it at some storefronts you're walking by and it will use a combination of your location as well as reading what's going on and actually tell you information about the stores that you're looking at through the camera, like augmented reality. So it can use the knowledge graph to actually display information and kind of show you exactly what's around you, not just pointing on a map and kind of showing you based on satellite images. And the last thing they talked about in relation to this is actually Google Assistant will be available for iPhone. So you should be able to do all this, not only on Android anymore, but on iPhone. And one of the final cool features they talked about with Google Lens is like being able to point at events. Like if you see an advertisement for a show or something, you can point at that and it will remind you about that show based on context. So that's all really cool stuff. I'm pretty excited once it comes out. All right, now the next major topic they talked about was all the features coming to Google Home, the voice assistant that sits in your house. And one of the main things they first talked about was proactive assistance, which is pretty cool, because normally you have to talk to the Google Home and then it'll respond to you. But now it will actually suggest things out of the blue by showing a light rotating on it that lets you know that it has something that it wants to say. So the example they gave was if there's heavy traffic and it knows that you have an appointment or something, it'll say, look, you better leave early this time. And it's unsolicited. It just pops up and says, oh, there's something I need to know. It's not like, as far as I know, that it just starts yelling at you, which is good as well. Also for the Google Home, they're introducing hands-free calling. So you can use it as like a voice speaker and you say, call this person 
and they're allowing free phone calls to anyone in the United States, either landlines or mobile, which is pretty cool. As for entertainment, they're finally gonna allow you to use Google Home with Bluetooth before you had to use like Chromecast features, but now you can finally connect directly to it, which is, I think that's well overdue. I don't know why they didn't have that before, but whatever, better late than never. And they're also introducing a lot more services that you can use with it like HBO Go and Spotify and SoundCloud and a few others. And finally with Google Home, I think one of the coolest things they're doing is allowing visual responses on the Google Home. You're like, wait a minute, how does that work? Well, it actually uses different screens that you have around your house. Obviously there's no screen on the Google Home, but if you say, show me the weather, then it will actually show it on your screen, on your TV, if you have a Chromecast or maybe it'll pop it up on your phone and that sort of thing. So it takes advantage of any screens you already have and can show you information. Also stuff like traffic, it'll bring up Google Maps on your phone and show your calendar on the TV, all sorts of cool stuff. I think that's really neat, I can't wait for that as well. Next thing they talked about was Google Photos. Not that much, but still a couple cool things. For example, they're doing Google Photo Books so using your photos library, you can select a bunch of pictures and it will use AI to pick out what it thinks are the best ones and you can edit them later. And then you can actually order a physical book with all those photos printed out, either hard copy or soft cover, and it'll be like 10 or $20 and they'll ship it to you. And also, as I kind of mentioned before, they're gonna allow you to use Google Lens on existing photos in your Google Photos library, so that's kind of cool. Next, they covered YouTube, my personal favorite, and there are two main topics they covered. First of all was 360 video. They're allowing you to use 360 video in the living room on the TV, and you would basically be able to use your controller to pan around instead of your phone. That's kind of cool. And also, they're introducing live 360 video, which, I mean, that's kind of neat. I don't really do 360 video myself, but I guess for those of you who do, 360 Live might be pretty neat. And also the other thing they talked about was Super Chat. So that's when you do a live stream on YouTube. You can pay a few dollars to have your chat show up the top highlighted. I don't really do that many live streams, so you might not have seen me do that. Anyway, they're allowing you to do an SDK for the Super Chat, which means that programmers can write programs that integrate and do stuff based on the Super Chat. So you can actually have stuff happen in real life when people donate on your live stream, whether it's turn on your lights on and off or fly around a drone. I guess you can program really anything to happen based on this API. All right, now the next thing they talked about, a lot of stuff was Android O, the next big version of Android, and they actually released the developer preview that you could use if you wanted, but probably not recommended on your main phone. So let's talk about some of those features. One thing they were focusing on is something called fluid experiences, which I guess is supposed to make it easier to use your phone in general. And for example, they introduced a lot of little features like picture in picture. So if you're in a video call and you're watching a video, you can actually have it stay on the front as you're navigating through different apps. So that's pretty cool. They're also doing notification dots, which has kind of been around in the iPhone for a long time with the number of notifications. It's similar here. Well, from now on, if you have a notification for a specific app, it will show a dot on that app on the icon on the home screen so you know that there's something that it wants to tell you. Although I think it's kind of redundant because it also shows it in the drop down drawer, but I don't know, maybe you don't use that a lot or maybe not every notification will show up there. And if you actually long press on it, it can pop up and show you that notification right there. And then if you wanna get rid of it, you can swipe away. And of course, they're gonna be using a little bit more AI, for example, with smart text selection. So now it's gonna be able to figure out what you're probably trying to select if there's a lot of text, like if you're selecting the name of a hotel or something, it can kind of figure out based on the name that you wanna select this whole thing instead of dragging it uh, from this word to this word, and also for phone numbers especially or addresses. And this way it can look at the text and based on what it actually says, say, all right, it probably wants to select this amount. Then they talked about vitals, which are a group of basic features that are kind of on the system level for Android that are meant to just increase performance. In regards to security, they're introducing Google Play Protect, which seems to be some sort of virus scanner. So when you download an app, it automatically, I guess, looks at that app and tries to figure out if it's gonna do anything malicious. I'm really skeptical about how well that works and why they don't do it 
or why it doesn't work that well in the first place when they're scanning when they upload. They do say they scan uploads and apps when people are uploading it to the app store. So why do you need this other one on the phone? I don't really know. And also we kind of know that Google Play is a lot less strict when it comes to allowing apps onto the App Store than iTunes. I think with Apple, they really are strict and hand select things to go on. Google, they just let on any crappy app and even though it might not be a virus, you know, they can't know that. They're not that good at it. So I'd be skeptical if this thing is even gonna work. As for performance, they apparently made a lot of improvements with the operating system itself. They said some apps increased by double the speed and way more faster boot times. We'll have to see about that. A lot of times they say that, but it's not really double. All right, now coming near the end, the other big thing they talked about was virtual and augmented reality. They're actually introducing more virtual reality headsets. So we had the daydream view for the Pixel, which I thought was not that good. I mean, it's only 60 hertz on the phone, but they are gonna be introducing standalone headsets for virtual reality, which I'm excited about. They have not released any specs, but they are working with HTC Vive. So there's gonna be like a portable standalone version of the Vive that you don't have to hook up to the computer. And it's gonna actually have inside out tracking, which is really neat. Although, as I mentioned, we don't know anything about these. I think it has to be at least 90 hertz to even be worth getting. You know, these phone virtual reality things with 60 hertz, it's trash. It's just garbage. Anything below 90 hertz is gonna make you sick and it's not gonna be good, or at least in the long term. So they better at least do 90 hertz, otherwise it's not even worth buying. As for augmented reality, this is also, I guess, gonna be kind of with the Google Lens, but the idea is that you can figure out where you are based on this visual positioning service that they're introducing. So you point your camera around, like if you're at the store, and it, I guess, has some sort of catalog or database of what the store looks like inside, maybe if the store scans it ahead of time, and if you're looking for an object, it will guide you based on what the camera sees, says, all right, you must be in this location, in this store, and show you where to go. So that's kind of cool as well. And the final thing they talked about very briefly, it's not really that interesting, is Google for jobs. Now, if you search for Google for jobs, it'll help you find them or something like that. I don't know, I don't really care about that, but maybe you do. And that's it. Hopefully you guys found this interesting. If you did, let me know what you think down in the comments section. And if you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those and also subscribe. I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Should be worth it. So looking forward to hearing from you guys again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.